I will be demoing the new system maintenance workflow today. System maintenance is set up to enable users to update data for their systems, including addresses, contacts, preferences, and the ability to decommission systems. Let me walk you first through addresses changes. First, you will come to the system maintenance page and select your preferred company that you'd like to make the changes of data on and your site. In this scenario, we'll select a company and site. For this workflow, we would like to change addresses, physical address and location. The table will display to you all of the potential systems that are available to change the physical address and location. Please note that you can select only up to 20 systems. For this demo, I'll go ahead and select two systems that I would like to change the physical address and location for. I've selected my two serial numbers and I will proceed. In the center of the screen, you'll notice that it shows the current data records, which are the data records you are changing. And it also lets me know at the top of the page that I'm in step two update records. It's really important to note for this scenario, if you update your physical address and location, this may result in a company ownership change to the systems. So it's very important that if you make this change, you actually also update parts delivery address and service report to address. There's two options on this screen. You can either browse a location or realize that a location is not listed and enter the data. For this demo, I'm going to go ahead and select a location, but I'll first show you what it looks like for location not found. If the location was not found, you'd simply put in the information here you would select my customers or my company if you are a partner and you would enter the correct information for that change. If you are a customer, you will actually only enter the information and not have the radio buttons. If we go back to browse locations, I'm going to select the first line item, which is test company. Keep in mind that if you'd like to, you can actually start typing in the site company name or address information that will filter the data for you. I'm going to go ahead and choose the first selection and click proceed. You'll see now that we still are showing the data records at the top of the page, including an owner company, physical address, etc. And it's letting me know what I'm going to update this to. This is the new information I've just selected from the previous screen. And again, uh, please note that this may result in a company ownership to the systems. I'll go ahead and select update. And you will receive a pop up message that lets you know your request has been submitted. The changes may appear right away on the My Cases page of the support site, or it may take some time to process this request. When your request is fully processed, it will show up to see on your systems page or on My Cases. Today, I will be demoing system maintenance. So with system maintenance, you're able to select a company and or a site. In this demo, I will walk you through how to change contacts within the system maintenance workflow. The system maintenance workflow allows you to make bulk updates to data for the selected area that you're moving through. In this scenario, I've selected a company and a site, and I'm going to select the category contacts. Within contacts, you're able to change the primary contact, parts delivery contact, service report to contact, and agreement and or agreement contact. You'll see the systems that are an option for you to change below. And please keep in mind, you can select up to 20 systems at a time to make this change. This will make the full change to you in this scenario. For this example, I'm going to go ahead and plan to change my primary contact for this test company, test company Austin. So let me go ahead and select two systems to move forward with. I'll go ahead and select the first two systems and proceed. You'll notice I'm now in step two, update records, and it's showing me in the middle of the screen the data records that I'm choosing to change and um, asking me to pick from a primary contact. You'll notice it will show me data here that I can select from, or if I do not see the contact I'm looking for, I can select contact not found and fill in the information. There is the ability to actually filter within these uh, fields, so you can go ahead and locate the exact data that you're looking for. 
or you can go ahead and select the contact if you have found that. To show you really quickly, if you did not find the contact, you would be able to enter the information, first name, last name, email, and office phone number. And upon entry of that data, you would be able to proceed. For this demo, we're going to go ahead and select a contact from the data list. I'll go ahead and select Larry as my person for the primary contact and hit proceed at the bottom of the screen. You'll now notice that it is letting me know that I have actually asked for these serial numbers to be have the primary contact updated to Larry at test.com. And that information is at the bottom of the, of the page. This looks correct to me, so I'm going to go ahead and update the information. As you'll notice, your request has been submitted and it, you may see this change immediately on systems or it may take a, a little while for a case to be processed. So at some point you will see this appear on the systems page or the My Cases view. I'll be sharing with you a demo today of system maintenance preferences. When you first come to the system maintenance page, you will want to select a company and a site of the records that you would like to update. In the demo today, we'll be looking at preferences and the options that are available to you to change for preferences are group, engineer dispatch, disk drive delivery, and auto support preferences. For this demo, we'll be going through disk drive delivery changes. Once you've selected your company site category and items that you'd like to update, it will provide you with a table of data of the, the opportunity to update any of that information. In this demo, I'll go ahead and select these two serial number systems to make the changes to. Again, I'm looking to change these items to change the preferences of the disk drive delivery for both of them. Once I've located the serial numbers, I'll go ahead and click proceed. You'll notice I'm now on the update records page. At the top of the page, it shows me the company, site, category, and item that I'm changing. Again, preferences, disk drive delivery, and provides the current data records that I'm updating. Here, you'll see the opportunity to select which disk drive delivery preference you would like. You can either select next business day or contract default with this particular set of serial numbers. I'll go ahead and select next business day, and then I'm able to proceed to the next step. This page shows me the data that I have update in this scenario. You'll notice that we see our serial numbers in the center of the current data records and what we're updating to. I will go ahead and confirm to move forward by clicking update. We then see that this request has gone through successfully and we will either see changes on the systems page within a few minutes um, or it may be captured in a case for further processing. If it actually is a case for further processing, it will go, you will need to go to my cases to review the status of your request. This is a demo for system maintenance, which allows you to conduct bulk updates to your data on the support site. What you'll do is go in and select the company and the site that you're interested in making the changes for. You can see there's an opportunity to change addresses, contacts, preferences, or to decommission systems. In this demo, I'll be sharing with you the decommission option. I'll go ahead and select decommission from the category dropdown. And I can go ahead and see the list of systems that are available to me to decommission. I'm going to go ahead and select the last two today to decommission. Keep in mind that these fields that you see here, such as serial number, and system hosting do allow you to start typing to filter the data set that shows in the table below. This is especially helpful if you have a large amount of system information that you need to look at. I went ahead and selected my two systems that I'd like to decommission. So I'm going to go forward to the next step by clicking proceed. You'll see I'm at the update record step in the scenario, uh, step number two. The company and site are at the top along with the choice I'm making to decommission. You'll notice the data records are listed in the middle, letting me know which serial numbers I am decommissioning. And then there's a couple of open fields here at the bottom to enter. It defaults to today is the decommission date. And then I'll go ahead and select what is the reason for my decommission. In this scenario, I'm going to go ahead and select a tech refresh and upgrade. And after I do that, it will allow me to proceed further. On this page, it's verifying the information that I've entered so far in the workflow. You'll notice again, we have the company in sight at the top along with the category choice decommission. 
the two serial numbers that we're choosing to decommission today. And it does again show me the information that I've entered on the date of decommission and the reason, which was the tech refresh and upgrade. All of this information looks correct to me, so I'm going to go ahead and update this record. I received a confirmation message letting me know that my request has been submitted. So you will see changes on the systems page within a few minutes. If there is a case that's created with this request, it may take a little time to show up. And in that case, you'd want to go to the My Cases page to review the status of your request. 